Two women holding goodie bags bump into each other in front of a house. The awkward coincidence leaves both of them speechless. One of them sees that the other one is wearing a ring and fancy jewelry. One of them calls her a loved one. The other one, confused, asks the young man why the strange woman is calling him love. The interrogation starts. The young man, Carlos, put in check by the clumsy encounter, says that the woman on his right is his long-lost sister. The silence extends a bit more. The alleged sister gets the idea and confirms what Carlos said. The young man asks what they're doing there anyway because he asked them not to come. The two women, at the same time, say that they wanted to surprise him. Carlos goes outside. One of them asks Carlos why they are wearing the same clothes. Carlos says that he really doesn't understand and that that is making him go completely bonkers. He says that it must be just a coincidence. The other woman suggests that they go inside so she can get to know more about his sister. Carlos says that his sister is quite busy. His so-called sister says that she has all the time for him and that, in fact, she would love to meet his secondary family. The other woman asks what that is supposed to mean. Carlos says that his sister means the family that they've built together. The alleged sister confirms. Carlos invites them inside. Carlos' main partner tells Carlos' alleged sister to feel at home and walks away. The woman then has a good time around the luxurious house. She asks herself what on earth is going on and wonders why Carlos has another house. Moments later, the woman returns and asks if she liked their house. The woman who lives there with Carlos says that he is a superb decorator. Carlos approaches. The woman asks them who's the oldest. They both say that they are at the same time. The so-called sister says that she's the oldest. Carlos says that it's a complicated thing because they always role-played that she was the oldest. His partner says that she understands and that it's actually very normal between siblings. Carlos' partner asks the other woman to feel free to put her goodie bag in the cupboard. The woman laughs and says that she gets it. The tension carries on in the living room. Carlos decides to tell his partner that he needs to tell her something very urgent. The young woman says that she's upset. Carlos says that he doesn't understand why he invited her. His partner says that he needs to be nicer to her, especially because he has just re-encountered her. Carlos says that the problem is that his sister is very jealous, and he wants to avoid getting into trouble. His partner tells him not to worry because she understands his situation. She calms him down, and he thanks her for it. His partner says that, as a man who serves his country, she's sure he's not capable of doing anything immoral. She asks him if she ain't right. Carlos says that she knows him very well. His partner says that she sure does. After a pause, she says that she's going to the kitchen. Carlos says that he'll just get changed. Later, Carlos' partner invites who she believes to be Carlos' sister, Karen, to have a seat. Karen sits in front of her and asks and what's going on. And says that she looks a bit nervous. Karen says that she's not. And praises Karen's necklace and inquires about her plans for the night. Karen says that she had an arrangement, and says that she would like her to stay for the night and says that she can call Gustav if she wants. Karen doesn't look very excited about it. Carlos approaches and asks what they're up to. They say that it's really nothing. Carlos says that it looks like they're having a serious conversation. Karen says that he's right. He says that he understands, and tells him that his sister is going to sleep in their house for the night. Carlos says that it can't be because she has a daughter to look after and looks very gobsmacked to hear it. Karen says that her so-called brother is right and that her daughter thought her father was decent, but by the looks of it, she was misled for a long time. Carlos says that she shouldn't say such things because her partner works very hard to give them a comfortable life. Karen says that he's right about him being very busy, and tries to calm them down, saying that they're supposed to enjoy the moment, and says that she would love to meet the daughter. Karen says that it's a good idea and that they only have to ask Carlos about it. She asks him, and he tells them to go ahead. Later, Karen approaches Carlos once again. 
He tells her to stop doing that because they can catch him. She says that she doesn't care because she misses him. She sits next to him and tries to cuddle. Carlos tells her to stop because they will be seen. And hears them. She says that she really deserves it after the long distance she traveled to see him. Carlos says that, in all fairness, it's not a good idea. Karen says that, sadly, she won't be able to do anything spicy because she's on her period. Carlos asks how it can be. She says that she's sorry, but she can't, and she walks away without explaining. Carlos tries to call her back, but she ignores him. Later, and waits for Karen in a park. There, she asks what his reaction was. Karen explains that she told him she was in her menstrual period when he offered to do it with her, and says that he's really stupid to believe that she doesn't know what he's up to. Karen says that she's sure he doesn't suspect a thing, and says that she was really excited for the wedding, but she definitely changed everything. Karen says that she also didn't know he had a lover, and promises to take revenge, and Karen really fancies the idea and asks Karen to hide behind the tree and picks up her phone. She calls her fiancé and asks what he's up to. Carlos says that he's at home, waiting for his sister, and says that she wants him to go to the park and meet her. Carlos asks why. She explains that she wants to spice up their relationship a bit. Carlos says that it sounds like fun and asks if, after that, they're going to a safer place. His partner confirms and says that she wants him to be quick on his way there. He says that he really misses her, so he wants to stay with her for as long as they can. And says that it sounds lovely. Carlos hangs up. She gets up and walks to the location and gave him. A couple of minutes later, he arrives at the selected destination. He tries to express his love to Karen, but and surprises him from behind. The woman in front of him turns around and reveals herself as Karen. She asks him to be honest with them and tell the truth. Carlos takes a deep breath and says that he has already told her that the woman is his sister. Karen tells him to reveal information about his wife and children. She crosses her arms and demands the truth. Carlos tells her to stop believing his crazy sister. Karen says that she's going to fetch her daughter to tell them who's her father. Carlos becomes desperate and makes a Freudian slip. Karen says to strike out. Carlos says that he wants to explain, but their attitude is driving him nuts. He discusses the matter with them. And says that she just wants the truth. Karen says that that's right. Carlos tells Karen to go away, but and says that she's not going anywhere. Carlos says that she just wants their happy couple's lives to be normal without his sister annoying him. And asks what's wrong with him. He says that he doesn't understand what she's on about, and says that she knows he has a second family. She asks what he means by saying nothing wrong happened. Carlos says that she shouldn't believe that crazy woman. Karen says that she sees that his acting skills are gone. Carlos decides to blame the woman for seducing him and trying to blackmail their relationship, and says that she saw everything with her own eyes. Karen gets really annoyed. She puts her ring on his hand and tells him to keep her stupid partner. She says that she wants a divorce as soon as possible. Carlos insists on trying to convince and that he's innocent. He says that he just wants to build a better future with her. And says that she can't believe he's that stupid. She returns the ring to him and says that she doesn't want it. Carlos asks if she knows the price of a ring like that. She says that she doesn't care and that he should have thought about it before shattering her and Karen's hearts. Carlos says that they can try it again. Karen asks him if he's that stupid not to understand that and doesn't want him around. Carlos ignores her and keeps insisting. And says that she can't sympathize with him. Karen says the same. Carlos tells them to make the decision because being single is not in his plans. They ask if he's being serious. Carlos says that he spent a fortune buying the rings. They told him to leave. And says that he's very audacious to try and tell them what to do. She kicks him away. The annoying man lingers around and says that he wants to hear her final decision. And says that he must be demented to believe that she's going to accept the fact that he lives a double life. Carlos asks if she's sure she's going to leave him. She confirms. Carlos says that in that case, he's staying with Karen. Karen says that she doesn't believe he's still pulling that kind of stupid display again. She says that if he keeps doing that, she's calling the police. He says that she wouldn't. 
Karen tells him to leave, but he stays. And tells him to leave them alone. Carlos threatens them and says that they conspired against him to humiliate him. And says that she's glad the nightmarish fairy tale is finally over. Carlos says that he's going to sell the rings to raise quite a lot of money. And tells him to shut up and leave. Carlos threatens them again and walks away. The women ask each other how Carlos was capable of lying like that to both of them, and says that she's glad they found out. Karen says that men like him aren't worth their love. She says that she's very happy that they're finally out of that nightmare. Karen says that he destroyed two families. She says that from now on, they will have to hold their heads up high and carry on. Karen says that she hopes that the low life stops it. She shakes Anne's hands and thanks her for everything, and wishes her the best in life and thanks her for it as well. They tell each other that they're going to find a man who will treat them like they deserve and share a warm hug. And walks away. Infidelity and cheating don't lead us to happiness. Dishonesty and a lack of respect inflict pain. Honesty, bravery, and good communication are essential in solid relationships. Our actions have consequences. The one who tries to manipulate someone's feelings always ends up with a dark and solitary outcome.